Director Academics, DAV CAE, and Dr. V. Singh, Director, DAV Public Schools, DAV CMC, Dr. B. C. Joshin, our Divisional Officer, and Mrs. Jaya Bharatwaj, our Principal Ma'am and the Cluster Head of Panchkula. So, thank you so much, everyone, for this great initiative and giving me the opportunity to present this in front of all of you. Okay, we all know our these days, it uh, focuses on competency-based assessment. Right? Everywhere we've been hearing this about competency-based questions, competency-based assessment, and overall. You all can see on my slide these three pictures. One, you all know very well, famous, I would say, in today's time, uh, Neeraj Chopra. Another one is the world's biggest canon. And you can see in the third picture, the projectile motion. Now, these three pictures which have been shown, these are somehow, do you think they are related to each other? Any, any inputs? Any inputs? Okay, I'll tell you. These three have been shown to tell you that according to, I'm not going to teach physics, but it is just to tell you that projectile motion According to this, if anything which has been thrown at an angle of 45 degree, then it is uh, goes to the farthest, right? But Neeraj Chopra has thrown the javelin at an angle of 35 degree, 36 degree rather, and world's biggest cannon which was being used in the First World War in 1918. It had an angle of 55 degree and it went, the shot went at 130 kilometers. So all these they range varies what we, uh, what the children were being explained through this motion that 45 degree they go to the farthest and what we have actually observed in real life is way way ahead so this is where lies the importance of competency this is what we have to teach and this is what the initiative which has been taken by cbsc and our a new nep policy national education policy 2020 that we have to bridge a gap between the curriculum and the real life situation. So friends, let us first explore what is competency-based education. Competency-based education is, instead of focusing on grades and yearly curriculum schedules, the main focus is placed on how competent each student is in the subject. This method is tailored to meet different learning abilities, which can lead to more efficient student outcome. There is no actual single global definition for competency-based education. We all are well aware with the national education policy as well. It has affirmed the need to move from road to competency-based learning, making it more focused on developing the creative and the criti critical thinking cap capacities to meet the challenges of the 21st century. It emphasizes that learners must be equipped with the ability to solve problems and assessment, must shift from testing primarily, primarily rote memorization skills to one that is more formative. So it promotes learning and development for our students and test high order skills such as the analysis, critical thinking and conceptual clarity. There are Many changes which have been made in this field, fine. There are the changes which have been made in this competency base. So we are thrusting towards this competency based. CBSE has initiated a very corresponding change in the examination and the assessment practices for the year 2021 and 22. This session, it has been, we all know it has been divided into two terms and overall marks and duration of the examination will remain the same. There would be change in the composition of assessment tasks, which would help to achieve the desired ends. So in this session and the forthcoming sessions as well, a greater number of competency-based questions that assess application of concepts in real life would be there. And you all know, you all are practicing it as well. We've been giving too much of practice to our children that there is a lot of focus on MCQs in the assessment policy, as they are a robust assessment technique for evaluating learning outcome, which will make our students 
mentally more ready for competitive examination in the future. And we all are well aware with this. We will come to the assessment principles. The assessment principles, first one states, promoting equity and inclusivity. Promoting equity and inclusivity is like creating a fair assessment that allows the full range of skills and abilities to be properly evaluated. This should be our main focus on. It's a key concern, I can say so. Where there are many groups of different socioeconomic and linguistic background and ability children are there. So we have to make accordingly. This is promoting equity and inclusivity. Second assessment principle says that real world relevance should be there of the assessment. When we are talking about the real world assessment, it is like focus should be on assessing the performance in the real world situation. It is also a characteristics of the major characteristics rather I'll say of CBA, that is competency based assessment where the assessment is a uh, task based on the authentic data and the real world context for example newspaper i will be taking up this point when i'll be explaining about the source based or the case study questions the third very principle of assessment is assessment of reliability again a very important principle reliability I would say rather is an important aspect of good practice in CBE. A CBE assessment designing as well as relating it to both paper pattern and marking process as well. It should be marked in such a way that enable all the children or candidates to achieve a score that reflects their true ability in the subject, which is again very important uh, teachers. Next is the validity of assessment. When we are talking about the validity of assessment, it is that designed on the close connection between the prescribed skills in the subject, syllabi, the questions, and the marks awarded in the actual assessment. That means we should be very, very thorough before we are preparing the paper or we are assessing a child through the paper, pen paper test, or this, whether they are in the form of subjective or whether they are in the form of objective we are talking about, one should be very, very thorough with the consent. And only we can give them the various choices in the MCQs. Last but not the least, that is high order skills based, another assessment principle. It is based on the reflection of CBA enabling students to advance based on mastery, allowing them to demonstrate the full range of skills required to progress onto a more advanced level of study, which is again very important. So all these assessment principles, they are very important when we are talking about the competency-based assessment, when we are talking about that, how we have to prepare the paper, preparing questions for the paper we all we all are making an effort to make the best out of our capability while we are preparing the questions for the particular part or while we are giving any kind of a revision worksheet also to our students we make sure that we are giving them all kind of choices now next i would like to go in for just you all have gone through the CBSE circular. We all are well aware with the change. And this slide shows the same. It is that in the first one, it has been shown that composition of the existing one. In, in the session 2021, there were the objective type questions. We all know the multiple choice questions as well, 20%. But now there is a competency based, which I've been talking about, which will be of minimum 30%. Then we have, even though they were in the session 2021, they were the case study and the source-based questions, but we have now as well, which is going to be there in the term two also. So the in crux, the competency-based question here would be 30% in the current session. 
the object objective questions will be 20 percent and remaining 50 will be all kind of short long questions we are talking about so this is the modified version and you all can see my friends that there are there is a lot of uh, importance which has been given to the competency based because they actually want to train children for the future as well future things, how it is going to help in the uh, in their future life or whichever fields they want to go in for. Now, let us see, you all, I know, we all prepare question paper and we all have all sides of where we try to incorporate all kind of questions, you know, the types of questions. So today I am going to take up all sorts of questions other than assertion and reasoning, assertion and reasoning was very well explained by Sir yesterday. So I will not be taking up that topic. And besides assertion and reasoning, the other question, other set of questions which are going to be there, we I will be discussing that. And I will appreciate this not here. I'm not, I'm no one actually to judge. I am one amongst you people only who is also in this plea of learning. So this is just the initiative, just to have, you know, uh, the um, to keep the SEP webinar alive, like we say to the class as well. I I appreciate if you could come up with the answers of these questions. So the very first one is when we are talking about the multi competency based question. Very first one is the multiple choice question. Now you all can see in the first question. It says, identify the appropriate reason for uprising of desolation weavers from the options given below. And they are the direct options which have been given. The direct options are given and a child has to put a tick to any of the one option. We all know that, right? So we have to give options in such a manner which are very close to each other. This is how we are going to gain. This is how we are going to know that how a child has prepared. So anyone with the correct answer to this? Can I have the input from anyone? Okay, so the answer to this I'll state is that they've been demanding the higher wages. The second question, in other form we can give the MCQ, what did Ross be a government do to, in order to bring equality in France? When we are framing such type of a question, it's just not this simple. I have tried to put those questions on the slide where there is a variation. So in the second question, there are these sentences which have been given and a child, not merely the child has to put a tick to one, two, three option or ABCD, but he has to actually see which one is the correct. All three are correct or first or second are correct, or second or third is correct. So the child is going to put a tick to the correct one. Choose the correct option. So he or she is going to see on that basis. Next thing, there is another one. Now, there were only three. So one, two, three. We can also give the question in such a manner as Different arguments are usually put forth in favor and against partiality. So select those which are in the favor of partiality and select one answer which has been given below. One answer, that means we have to choose out of A, B, C, D, which one to go ahead with. It says reduces conflict among the different communities, decreases the possibility of arbitrariness, delays the decision-making process, accommodates diversities, increases instability and divisiveness, promotes people's participation in the government, and undermines the unity of a country. Now, while reading all this, there are certain words which have been taken little, you know, they are aware with. Little from what has been mentioned in our textbook, entirely from that, and little changed concept just to know that whether they have understood the concept clearly or not so while framing such a question we can just confuse them a little related to by giving these codes below like abdf acef abdg bcdg like this so that they can actually read the question we have to instill in this our children that 
objective type doesn't mean that they have to just go in keeping pocky and they can put anywhere the option is. They can put a tick to it. We have to actually tell them that they have to read the question very thoroughly because one word in the whole sentence can bring a change in the meaning of the whole sentence. And generally, children, what they do just to finish their paper, you know, quickly and to be called that first, like when we take online exam and children, uh, they mention in the group first, submitted. So, you know, they get a kick in that. I, I, I was the first one who has submitted the paper. We have to teach them. There is no kick in such thing. Rather, you are playing with your future. We have to tell them it's better to give the response in the WhatsApp group or you submit your paper a little late. Late is within the time frame, but not as like the paper has been given and they are submitting it or they are giving it to the teacher. They have to read it very thoroughly each and every point. Any one single word can bring a change. This we have to tell our students again and again. And I'm sure we as teachers, we keep telling them right from the beginning of the session that you have to be very, very thorough with the uh, subject, your chapters, and then you have to read the question paper very, very thoroughly. Now, the next type of question which we can uh, give it to our children in the paper, and you all must be giving as well, is to choose the correct or the incorrect statements. Here also, I have taken two different examples. One is that which of the following statement is incorrect about the unification of Italy. And there are just four simple sentences which have been given. And a child has to put a tick to the one which is incorrect. Fine. Three are correct and one is incorrect. Another type of a question is which of the following statements again to see you can all can see that which of the following statements is or are regarding the traditional method of farming even this also the statements are been given and a child has to choose the option now methods like irrigating land with the help of persian wheels are not used in the traditional method of farming now when a child is reading generally this happened when they read it just they read men like irrigating land with the help of the Persian wheel. They are few are yes, they are quite attentive enough to read it thoroughly, but the rest may just go like this only. And they may choose the option of uh, two and four are correct or like this. Any 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 manner. So this is just to another form. That's just in another form through which the question can be asked in the paper. Next one is about uh, which of the following statement or statements are incorrect related to the taxation policy responsible for the French Revolution. Now here, if you read the sentences, I'm not going to read all the sentences, but if you read it, you'll find it, there are minor changes which have been made. Minor changes like we all know, those who teach history or political science in history, particularly French Revolution, you'll find that they were the first and the second state who been burdened with the uh, who were not been burdened with the taxes. But if you read, it is written first and second state, which formed forty percent of the total population, the clergy and nobles, they been they were not been exempted. Okay, and like this. Not just by saying they were not paying the taxes. We have written they were not exempted from all taxes and all has been added. So this is how we can little make a change. And we all know that they never used to pay the tax. You know, they were the, uh, the, the best lot. We can say they were very near and dear to the king. And they were the privileged one who never ever paid the tax. So by making such uh, you know, by adding mod or by adding all kind of taxes, that will create some kind of that a child has to read the paper quite attentively. So the correct options have been given, choose the correct option. The options have been given, given below and a child can not go through it. Next is complete the statement. Another type of a question which can be asked, which we state as the fill-ups. Now, first one is from geography. Like a part of the land, uh, economics, a part of the land, it is also devoted to the growth of dash Kharif crop, which is harvested once a year in its raw form or as jaggery and is sold to the traders of the nearest small town named as dash. So here the two options have been given. 
and a child has to choose one. And very close, you all can see the options have been given to the children. Next one says, which is from political science, the prudential and the moral reason. Only if child knows the definition, then only the child can complete this. He can put a tick to it. Next, we'll go the picture-based questions. Even though I have taken the pictures from history only, but children can get pictures from economics, they can get it from geography, and they can get it from political science as well. Now, when we are giving such pictures, we have to make sure when we are giving the options, the as they are the multiple choice questions only, and we are giving them the options, we should make sure that we are giving them the options which are very close to each other. Why are you saying they are very close to each other? That is the options, very near to the correct answer, which again confuses child, for which he has to be again very, very thorough with the chapter, very much familiar with the chapter. Then only the child can answer the question. First one, we all very well know that Ottoman Bismarck, and second one, we all know is Napoleon. And uh, according to this picture, the losses of Napoleon. We can explain each picture to the children as well. I generally state to my children whenever we are doing a chapter, as now the number of the chapters have also decreased. So I always discuss these pictures with the children. And first I ask them, what do they understand from that? What they have gained, what additional information which has been given on the same page and what they have understood. They come up with the ideas and then I tell them, this is how it has been depicted. And you will see, number of times they are with the correct answers as well child who has read the chapter he can very very easily you know explain what has been given in the picture very easily so here also the two pictures and the options which have been given they are very close to each 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 of the option is very close to the correct answer so this is the another form which we call it as a picture based question Next, I'll go with the match the following. They've been doing match the following, right? I'll say from second, third onwards. But again, just not the direct one. In this manner, the options can be given. A, B, C, D, they have to put a correct, they have to put a tick. Which one is the correct one? And when we are talking about this, it can be in political science, it can be in economics, it can be in geography as well. And when I, I have, just because I teach history and political science, so my most of the questions are based on history and political science only. So for this, we all know what was the outcome of the French Revolution, what is meant by liberalism. We all know the Napoleonic Code as well, and the Treaty of Constantinople. So the child will put a tick on one of the options which is correctly matched. That for A, it's the third one, for B, it's the fourth one, C, first one, or D, the second one. So the A option. So for this, again, he has to be very, very cautious while he's reading all the choices which have been given. Next example is related to this. You know, the, uh, why I have uh, chosen this, you all can see, if you are seeing these slides carefully, that in my this question of match the following, I have put one, two, three, four on top. And then I have written A, B, C, D at a side. A very simple change. You all can see that. That is for option A, one, D. That is when we are talking about Union of India. Is it D the correct option? B, or is it the B one, which is one, uh, is it correct? Or the C option is correct? You just have to, you know, play with the mind of the children. You just have to bring a little change. In my two questions, deliberately I have put this question. You all can see in the choices which I have given, I've written one, two, three, four on top and A, B, C, D at a side of it. In my earlier question of math the following, I have written A, B, C, D like this and the options have been given in this manner. We don't know how are we going to receive it in CBSE, in our board exam for our children. So we have to prepare them accordingly. That is why both the options have been taken for match the following. And we expect that definitely there is going to be a question like this in the paper. 
So we have to prepare our children accordingly. If we are giving just one type of a question or match the following, we can't expect our children to perform in that manner. They might get confused. Ki humne to aisa kiya hi nahi. Bhai, ye kis tarah se aa gaya? How to match now? Bhai, one se kaise aa hota hai match? So we have to give uh, our children that practice so in any manner the question comes, they are able to do so. Another one, I'll go with a map-based question. Now, map-based question, when we are talking about in term one, definitely we are only going to uh, get, our children are only going to get from geography, the map-based question. So the map-based question is going to come like this. We can even give them the practice. We can give them the practice on the Google form, which is very, very simple. We can take their test, which can be checked also. We don't have to check it. It will be checked. Uh, and we can always tell where they have made the mistake by just putting a, uh, you know, pressing the correct option. They can get to know about it. So another one, to be all know, it is going to come for two marks. There are going to be two questions. Section D is comprised of map-based question, and they are going to be two. So one like this. And another one like this. This is from the water resources. We all know about the dams for which the content is not going to come and only the map work is going to come for the, in the exam. So like this for the correct option, Nagarjun uh, hai, Tungbhadra dam hai, ye Sardar Sarubha dam hai, or Rana Pratap Sagar dam. So the children will put a take to the correct option, which is the third one, that is the Sardar Sarubha dam. By this, we can give them the uh, of, uh, practice. Another set of question is identification. Now, this is uh, very, very important because uh, I believe that our children are not used to such type of questions at all. This is what I, I this is what, you know, I felt while there, there were few children who had come to school to give their paper offline. I observed this because when such type of a question was been given, while I was invigilating, I saw that there were children who have been writing the name of the crop in, uh, or the soil, I can say, the question like says, in front of that particular statement. Develop in areas with high temperature and heavy rainfall. You know, against each statement, they've been writing the name of the soil. They did not understand, even though it was been explained, that these all features are of one type of a soil and they have to just put a tick to the correct option. They were writing the name of the soil in front of, you know, the each statement, which was which states that such type of a question, and there were not just one, two or three, but I found who all had come. And while we've been checking the papers as well, I found that there were children who actually did not understand this, that they had to put a tick only to the, to only to one option. They don't have to write, you know, the name of, uh, by stating one uh, statement related or one feature in front of that one particular, but that soil. So we have to guide them. We have to train them. We have to give such type of questions to our students. You know, if we take pre-boards or we take, we are taking there any of the periodics, we have to inculcate such type of questions in our children. And time and again, even though we keep telling them, like I said it in the beginning of the session also, we keep telling them that they have to be thorough. We have to keep instilling in them this. Now, the second one in the same identification, the power is, it is from political science, the power is shared between central and state government to local government. It is called as the third tier of the government. Then the state governments are required to share some powers and revenue with them. Now, when we are talking about the options, uh, a child can ask this, that it is a unitary. Child can ask, it's a federal. Only if the child who has not understood the concept of decentralization, then only the child can come up with such answers. But ch child who has understood the concept of decentralization, firstly, the meaning only, then only he can come up with the correct answer that is the decentralized system. So I'll say, and we all do it also, we, uh, uh, that we begin with 
the meaning of the particular word, particular, uh, you know, topic with the meaning of that particular topic only so that the child should know what it actually means. And then the child can actually put a tick to the correct option. Next one is arranging sequence. Now, arranging sequence, children, you know, they are uh, in a habit, like I said it initially, I said it before, they are in a habit of uh, going through, you know, very fast reading it and actually uh, uh, not reading properly the whole sentence, not learning the ears and everything. And uh, they get confused in such type of questions. What generally I do, and I think the webinars or the seminars which I've taken before, I explained it also, that it is very important if we could give a timeline to a student to our students, if we could make a flow chart and can give it to the children related to it, then it becomes really easy. This is another type of a question where they have to arrange in sequence either the incidents or sometimes or the particular event which happened in the year. It can be the Congress sessions also. It can be the whereas, uh, like we can see in the second question, uh, the related to our nationalism in India, it can be the movements which have been initiated by Mahatma Gandhi. So in any manner, if such type of a question comes, what comes first and what comes later, which incident occurred first and then later, or year wise, it is very important to give, you know, the timeline or the flowchart to the children. Once they have that in their books, or in their notebooks, it'd be so, so easy for them to attempt such type of questions, which is arranging sequence. Now, generally, kya hota hai? Ki, uh, children, you know, they get confused. When we are talking about nationalism in India, they get confused when, uh, you know, uh, there are three examples which are related to Satyagraha, the Champaran, and uh, then Khera district, and then Ahmedabad textile mill workers, they get confused which incident occurred first when we are talking about role attack we are talking about uh, jalewala bag they both occurred in the same year so they get confused ki kaun sa pehle wa, kaun sa baad so once that timeline has been given to the children or the flow chart has been given it is really easy for them to attempt such type of questions that is arranging sequence so this is uh, another one next we have true and false Seems to be easy, but yes, very tricky for few. Tricky for few, like you all can see, we all know, you know, children learn, uh, those who actually do, uh, they cram the answers. Sometimes, you know, children are so good at note learning that they can actually learn the whole page and they can tell you the answers within a minute and so on. And there would be a child who will not be able to learn the whole page but he or she knows the concept or what is the content of the whole page so their children that particular child who has learned this will never ever fail in attempting such type of a question which is which seems to be very very simple and very very a short question related to true and false now it states First one, I'll read it out, that a legitimate government is one where citizens do not acquire stake in the system through participation. Is it a true or a false statement? So child who will read it, you know, just to finish his paper first or not reading it uh, attentively, child will say, it's a true statement. Many legitimate government ke baare mein padha hai, and yes, citizen do get a stake. But he missed that particular word in between that is do not acquire a stake. So adding not in between has made the whole statement wrong. So even though usne jo bhi learn kiya hai, fata fat se, we can say, uski jo wrote, uh, cram kiya hai particular answer, wo to bilkul galti ho kya, and it is entirely wrong. Similarly, the conservative regimes set up in 1815 were democratic in nature. Another statement, which is, again false we all know it was autocratic in nature so by just changing one particular word the meaning of the whole sentence changes and this is what we have to do if we have to prepare our children for scoring the full marks or we are, want our children to come up to the leak of you know the 90 percentage and so on we have to tell them they have to read it very very thoroughly besides these they can also be uh, uh, 
uh, graph-based question in geography and economics. They can be the uh, uh, table which has been given. Such type of a question can also be asked in exam. I hope till here I've been able to explain you that what all questions can be inculcated by we are preparing a question paper for our students and we can prepare them for the board exam. I hope I've been able to explain you. Yes, yes, Nidhi, excellent. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Excellent, Nidhi, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, um, we'll move on to our next part, which is about case or source based questions. Thank you so much for the encouragement, that, that has boosted my confidence. Nidhi, <laughs> you speak so well. I was right. Really, really, ma'am. And I should listen it's a to wonderful you session. first. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Um, now we'll come up to this uh, case and source based questions. Now, when we are talking about case and source based question, you know, um, even when I was also going through this case and source based, and we are being giving, to, we are giving this to the children. We gave it in the last year also in our papers and everything. This, but there was some kind of confusion related to this case and source based. And I found that it is nothing. They're just the you know uh, two sides of the same coin. When we are talking about case, particularly, we are talking about the real life situation. When we are talking about source based. Somehow, the same extract has been taken up from our books, from our chapter. So case study is basically a scenario in a particular professional context which students are expected to analyze and respond to, guided by specific questions posed concerning the situation. They are sometimes also based on some real life examples. Case studies, rather I'd say, not sometimes, yes, they are based on real life experiences. And the questions are asked based on the given paragraph. They've generally been given four to five. We all can see in one of our sections, uh, there are section C. We have two case based questions according to the sample paper, which has been issued by CBSC. And uh, six questions have been given, according, from which, amongst those six questions, children will be attempting five questions, five from each. Of each source which has been given or the case study which has been given. So we have to prepare them that they don't have to attempt all six, one of the aspect of it. Now, while framing a question, we as an examiner need to have a conceptual understanding, which is very, very important of the topic and a thorough knowledge of the subject as well. We all are much, much beyond capable of framing this. We, I know that. Now, case-based questions, also appears in the board exam. We all know they are going to come and there's too much of stress has been imposed on that. It will always be linked to one or the other topic from the textbook, which is again very important. It is not necessary that we, when we are giving them a case study question, it has to be from you know any uh, thing which has been given in our source, not necessarily. We can take up from newspaper, we can take up from, you know, the other magazines in economics, you can get number of examples related to it, where the data has been given, where uh, the other information which has been given related to in geography, related to agriculture, which has been mentioned in our newspaper or about climate change. We can take the source case from there and we can always give it to our children. We can always, you know, give them the practice related to it. If you are giving them the practice like this, I can assure you that our children will not, um, you know, they are going to score less. They are definitely going to score much, much higher because we are preparing them with the difficult questions. And what we find in both, they are the simple extract which have been taken from our chapters and the questions are straight away being taken from that paragraph only. But generally, when I or uh, we all in social studies department, when we are preparing the paper, we generally make sure that we are not giving the questions from the same paragraph. The paragraph is, if I'm talking about source-based, like I'll show you, this is related to, uh, I'll explain you with this. Uh, this is related to Napoleon, right? 
from our, the very first chapter of uh, history, nationalism in Europe. In this, what all information, when a child will go to, I'm not going to read all this, but when a child is going to read it, and the questions which have been given, they are related to it, but the child will not find the answers directly from this paragraph. We always, I think, we all as teachers tell our students that they just don't, they just can't expect that in the paper, the paragraph has been given and they are going to get the answer directly. It can be related to what has been explained. So you all can see the questions which have been framed here. The answer has not been given directly in the paragraph. But yes, it is related to the information which has been given. So we have to prepare our children accordingly. And I always tell my children that you just don't have to, you know, lay stress or read or, you know, children in your schools as well, the children must be asking that, ma'am, do we have to learn sources also? Ma'am, sources bhi learn karne hai? Do we have to learn the name of all the painters also which have been given or the artists which have been given below the, you know, paintings or the uh, pictures which have been or the caricatures which have been given in our book? So I always tell them that you don't have to learn it. It is just that you have to go through it. Once you have understood, it will not be difficult for you to answer any of such question. So same here, even though the question, the answers are not in the paragraph, but they all know because they have read about it. So this is what we have to explain it to the children. This is what we have to, you know, guide our students that don't expect you are going to get the answers directly in the paragraph. It, it comes well and good. Our children are prepared for the worst, that the answers are not directly been given. And when we are, you know, uh, when they are getting the paper, and uh, if they don't get such direct answers, then also they are prepared in that manner. So we have to tell them this. Another one is uh, the example which has been taken is of economics, which has been again taken by our man from the, uh, uh, you know, the situation which has been given in the paper and the questions were been given related to it. So relating to this, I will put another example. This is an economic, this is from economics, the example which has been taken. And um, another example I can quote is related to elections. Whenever the, you know, the elections have been conducted and we are teaching political parties or we are quoting, it's just an example I am telling you. There is so much of news which has been coming in the newspaper related to it. And um, we can always take the extract from the newspaper where the role of the uh, election commission has been given or uh, the kind of uh, work which has been or how are they promoting you know their party what kind of a manifesto has been issued what what they have mentioned in a manifesto what kind of rallies they've been taking out and everything we can always through that explain it to our students in ninth class as well we in the chapter they are learning such terms manifesto and uh, then promoting their party and uh, you know campaigning and such things what is the, uh, the uh, epic such things which have been given in the newspaper now directly if we have taken the extract from it we can uh, maybe the election photo identity card which has been used for the elections is not there but we can always ask if it has not been given in that paragraph, we can always ask, what does it mean? Because it is related to the elections only. So this is just an example that how we can take up these sources, how we can take up the case study questions, and we can actually give it to our students for the practice. I'm repeating that not necessarily we have to take it from our chapters only. Not necessarily the questions have to, they have, child has to find the answers from that particular paragraph. They should know what does it mean. They should know the concept. They should know the content actually, what has been given. And then the rest. They can be number of questions. Election is one of the example. They can be related to decentralization. It can be related to federal uh, federalism. It can re be related to power sharing also like about majoritarianism and so on. If we read, actually in newspapers, we find so much of information which has been given. And we can always take up that paragraph and give it to, the, give, give it to our children. So this is, this is the concept which has been added in social science now. Now I'll say from the last session, 
But I think in Hindi and English, they've been getting the unseen passages and all. And children are thorough with that as well. So maybe for that, they are getting the answers in that. But in our part, in our uh, uh, subject, it is not the same. Next example, I'll move on to the example from political science, which is about the creation of linguistic states. Now, about this creation of linguistic state, again, you have to see that the paragraph has been given and the questions which have been given, children will not find the answer directly from them. Again, they've been twisted, you know, uh, the other questions have been given. I would like to mention here that Sir said that we should be avoiding none of the above and all of the above. I totally go with Sir, what Sir explained yesterday. Yes, such options should not be given. So try to give both A, B or like the other uh, options which have been given about language, geography, culture, ethnicity. We can give, like I said it in the beginning, the very close options to the correct answer and not directly from that paragraph. If such practice we are giving it to the children, it will help them really to score very, very good marks. Once when we talk about objective type, we say the objective type, the children are going to go, uh, score very good marks in that. But at the same time, even though the negative marking is not there, we have to tell them this as well, that there is no negative marking. And uh, such negative marking is not there. But where the question is wrong, the child gets zero also. It's not three mark per question. We have to give sentence a sentence and we give them one mark. If we don't give them one mark, a child is going to get it. So, where we talk about it, it is very scoring. At the same time, if the child has कहीं भी कुछ भी ध्यान से नहीं पड़ा तो चाइल्ड विल लूज होल वन मार्क एस वेल और वो वन मार्क से दैट मेक अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस सो दिस इज व्हाट वी हैव टू टेल देम दिस इज व्हाट वी हैव टू गाइड देम रिलेटिंग टू दिस ऑल अबाउट द सोर्स एंड द केस बेस्ड क्वेश्चंस दिस इज व्हाट ऑल आई हैड टू एक्सप्लेन अबाउट केस बेस्ड द टाइपोलॉजी ऑफ क्वेश्चंस which we can state and how can we prepare our children in such things. Any, any inputs? Any inputs? Uh, yeah, maybe ma'am, I just want one clarification. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are very much audible. Okay, okay. So uh, the question paper, the sample question paper given by CBSE, uh, they have given instructions that section B contains two, sorry, uh, section C has 12 questions in mm. this, attempt any 10 questions. Mm. So uh, okay. I just want one clarification that is it uh, compulsory to attempt five from each or they can do six from one and four from another case based uh, case study? Uh, as far so, as I have understood, ma'am. Because it is written, any uh, attempt any, any 10, 10 questions. questions have been given. As far as I have understood, it is related to, like there are six options which have been given to one case study, they have to opt five. And uh, uh, from other case study, again okay. from six, they have to uh, attempt five. And in the first one as well. Uh, because in in all these sections, they have not just you know, limited these questions to the subject accordingly, because they have given uh, in section one, uh, 24 questions attempt any 20 questions, mm -hmm. right? So, that way, I was just I'm a little confused that whether it is uh, can be six four or five five or something like that. I, I'm See, not clear that so, according to it, is five five. We will, we will prepare our children in the evening. We prepare them that they have to attend okay. six those five, right? It will be. Okay, you know, fine, fine. if it's okay. otherwise, so that the uh, heart should be touching. Mm -hmm. Fine, thank you. Uh, I would like to add one more thing. And, uh, I will be sharing a link, a Google Form link, and I request all of you that if you put there, you can find it to Okay, those source based questions are going to be formulated. I'll be sharing this with you. And, uh, why, is, why is this not clear? Am I audible now? 
Ma'am, you are clearly audible. Yeah. Yeah, now audible. Okay. I said I will be sharing a link right now in the chat box. And uh, in this link, you all are requesting to upload at least two to three source-based questions. That will be a question bank for all of us. This link. It will be open for a week. Okay. I'm sharing that. After a week only, we are going to close it. So you all are requested to make source-based questions and uh, kindly upload in that form. Any more queries, ma'am? Uh, Nidhi, ma'am, just one thing. Yes. Uh, Thamushi, this side. Hi. Hello. Uh, very well presented indeed. Uh, uh, there are just two things I want to uh, you know, inform. That one is about the feedback. Form. All of your requests to fill it up. The link has already been posted. And another for the case based questions for which Nidhi Ma'am has shared the Google form link with you. Right. Even if you make one each, I think that will be a big ask. Uh, okay. But for that, uh, I, Nidhi Ma'am, uh, could you please share your number with them? So you okay. all can uh, share your Gmail ID with her. Uh, so you will be given access on that mail ID to these case-based questions for a week's time. Mm -hmm. So Nidhi Ma'am is sharing her number in the chat box. So you can all make, send your Gmail IDs uh, to her so that she can give you access to whatever case-based questions are being prepared by the participants. Because it is about sharing. We just don't want to sit over the resource. We want to share it with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Kamanshi, ma'am, for adding this. Uh, yes, ma'am, because uh, I don't find anyone has any kind of query. Just for her, I think uh, um, for a minute or so, so that they can, I can write the number. Anna Kamishima? Yes, and another thing, uh, please ensure that you all either copy the link for feedback form or you uh, fill it up before you leave. Arushima, just two minutes more, I think. It will hardly be one minute. Yeah. 